it's gone. It's gone. So it's like learning a language. You need to learn these things separately, and then you need to learn how to apply them. Okay? And this, this has proven extremely difficult for people because they, they get so hung up on the, the terminology and technology that they're not really you know, it's like, wow, what does that word really mean? You know, that's not the point of the whole thing. The whole point of the thing is just to put it all together. And the last quote I have, and I'll continue, is the same human being is satisfied that the best he or she can do at any given moment is the best he or she can do at any given moment. Okay, what does that mean? It means when you go out to take a picture, the conditions, everything dictates the best you can do at that moment, and that's the best you can do. It may not be the best photograph that you could possibly have taken given other conditions, but it's the best that you can do at that moment, and that's all that we require. Okay? Making photographs provides uncomfortably accurate feedback about the gap between what you intended to do and what you actually did. It's the other thing, is you get immediate feedback. Okay? Is that right? Is it wrong? Can you rationalize it away and say, oh, that's good enough? You know, sort of thing. So, the other thing is photography, you're always learning. No matter how good you think you get, it can kick your butt, right? As you go out and you say, what? Everything I did, what happened? Nothing worked. Okay? Because the subtleties of photography are immense, and you just said, simply need to be able to learn them and, and deal with them. And it's, it's experience and it's doing, as we said, lots of little things very, very well. And there's my over here. So to begin, we're going to start somewhere that I've never really started before. Photography is much, much easier than it used to be. Why is that? Because of visual photography. There are images being made now that were impossible to be made five years ago. Unfortunately, there are millions of images being made today that shouldn't have been made five years ago. And <laughs> <laughs> Collectively, has it gotten better? Absolutely. Uh, has the relationship of good to bad images gotten better? I'm not so sure. Okay. So, but it is. We we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So. Things you need to know about digital photography. Do you do not need a high-end digital single-lens reflex camera to do quality photographic work? Holy crap, did you say that? <laughs> I'm going to show you. I don't believe it. There's four covers of the Illinois Steward. Okay. One of, three of which were made with my $3,000 digital reflex camera system. One was made with Sue's $300 point and shoot. Can you tell which is which? Of course you can. Right? Can you tell? No. You can't tell. Because the technology has gotten so, you know, so uh, sophisticated that this one and this one have become comparable. Okay? What's the difference between this one and this one? Well, this one weighs four times as much, or five times as much. This one is, is much easier to control than this one. This one has but this is, this one is designed for people who are relatively serious photographers. This is designed for the consumer market, but the controls on this one and the controls on this one are the same. But nobody uses these. <laughs> you put it on automatic and you take a picture. Right? Anybody ever taken a really good picture and, and somebody said, boy, you must have a good camera. Right? Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> Maybe you haven't. I don't know. I have. And, and you know, then I usually say, well, yeah, i got to keep it locked in the closet because it keeps going out taking all these damn pictures without me. So, the emphasis that we're going to talk about is whether you have this or this, I don't care. Okay? I don't care. What you need to do is to learn to control the things you need to learn to control. Okay? And I'm going to give you a handout. You might as well 
It says, do you know how to? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that you need to know how to do in your camera. And guess where this information is found? In the little book that comes with it. And all the other stuff as far as I'm concerned, who cares? It's like, you know, you've got a computer manual, like this stick for your computer, and you use about. All right, so Sue's going to pass these out. And every week, we're going to go over some of these. And, and, and you're going to check it. I'm going to ask you. And you need to know how to do it on your camera. Because everybody's camera is subtly different. And if, if you have a camera that you cannot control these seven things, then I will be brutally blunt with you. You need a new camera. OK? I'm not telling you to buy one. I'm just saying if you can't control all of these things, then you can't control everything you need to know to take a photograph, a good photograph. All right. So, so don't, don't say, well, you've got a really good camera. No wonder you take those pictures. No. Okay. Well, not an option. All right. All in here, all of your point and shoot digital cameras have enough options on there so you can control all or most all the creative tools of photography that we will discuss. Period. Image? Image. Which one was taken with point and shoot? Which one was taken with a high end digital macro system? I work average about $4,000. Which was which? Can you tell? Of course you can't tell. Right? This is with the high end point and shoot. This is with Sue's camera. Okay? Same control, same everything, except. Yes, please. Right? So you can do this. Can you take bad pictures with your points? Absolutely. I can take bad pictures all day. Took some yesterday. All right. There's another one. Which one is with point and shoot? Which one? You can't tell. Okay? So, more things you need to know. Shooting with digital helps you learn photography much faster than you used to. Why? We can take a lot more images. Instant feedback. Because you, 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 you take a picture, you look at it, and if it's good, you go, wow. And if it's not, it comes up and slaps you right in the face. It says, you didn't do it. You didn't have your experience. Your body of work tells you, you did something wrong. The camera did nothing wrong. The camera never does anything wrong. It just records what is in front of it in a way that it thinks has been programmed into it, and that's not always correct. Alright, so instant feedback. I was in Yucatan and I saw my first polar monkey and I'm like, holy crap, and I took that picture. And I looked at it like, oops, I forgot. And then I took that one. I corrected immediately because I was so excited seeing a polar monkey that I screwed it up. Uh, no. It was an exposure correction. But this is what the camera told me to do, and this is the correction I had to make. Because it was up against you know, the sky. So the camera thought this was right, that was right. And we'll, we'll get into why later. Just... Okay, so you have no excuse. I have no excuse for doing that. Except I kept it because it's a good illustration. You know? you, you, normally you just change and throw that away. You don't have to deal with it, it's gone. Delete. The right. little cameras have enormous advantages over film cameras. I thought I'd never say that. You can immediately see what you just shot. It's easy to experiment. It doesn't cost you anything. You used to have to send a film in and come back. And, I got 37 pictures of crap. <laughs> None of them are good. That's, a good. that's an expensive learning lesson. And, and it is two weeks past from when you saw it, right? Easy to travel with. You know, because no one's looking through your pockets or your film and all you're worried about. I was in Eastern Europe once and they you know, they're, they were melting luggage with their with their scans. You know, I'm like, I'm not sending my film through there. Quality comparable or exceeds film images. I've got I've got a, a camera now that exceeds film images. So easy to work with. Control. I don't remember if you put in that's what your that's what you shot for the whole roll of film. With a digital camera, you can control every individual image separately. Which 
change its white balance, you can change the ISO, you can, you can do anything you want to. Every image is an individual. Easy to duplicate. Remember how to have to duplicate slides? You send it off, you get a slide back, and there was, I can go on my computer and go, copy? I've got an exact duplicate of it. Okay. Easy to use an email, simple to complex documents and presentations. We'll show you a little bit about that. I'll show you a little bit about that later. Marginal images can be enhanced digitally. Yes, but don't rely on that. Okay, do not rely on, well, I'll fix it in Photoshop, or I'll fix it in Photoshop Elements. No, okay. Tweaking, yes. Fixing, no. Is it, that's a crutch, okay, that's a crutch. All right, so what, what, what is the, the regime of digital photography now. Well, you, we said it was cheaper, well, we'll see, okay. So instead of film, we record images on those little cards, right? Okay, what do you do with that? You can take it to Walmart, stick it in the card kiosk, and they'll give you prints, a lot of people do that. You can have your own little printer, you stick it in your own printer on your desk, you know, and then you print off. It's not a high-end printer, you know, like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 90 bucks, whatever. You can find it in those digital picture frames, you know, and it flashes all day, although those aren't cheap. You can stick it on your iPod or your iPad or cell phone or whatever. You ship it to people, I mean, you know. You notice you had camera and then final product, okay? Or you can take the images that you collected, you put them on a card reader or some device that will then put them into a computer system. Okay. If you don't have a computer system, use your options, or else you can go to the library or something, you know, they have computer systems you can use, personal computer. Then you can adjust, you can do whatever you want to with the image, and then you can get a high image. Computer. I have a printer on my desktop that does archival 200 year prints that are far better than any print I ever bought commercially and it's sitting right on my desk. Okay? Of course, you got to feed it with ink and paper, you know, all those things. It's an option. You have to have image processing software. I use Photoshop. I don't know. You can use Elements. You can use Light. There are all sorts of image processing, which means you can take the image that you took and, and make adjustments to it. Anybody do that? Everybody does it? Okay. And then you have to, what do I do with the image? You used to have a piece of film. Now what do you got? You got a digital file. You got to do something with it. Okay. I probably have 150,000 digital images. What? It's not a trivial thing. What do you do with them? And you have to find them. You got to store them somewhere. A lot of people, my neighbor, stores hers on her on her little card in the camera. I'm like, what? What happens when you want it when it fills up? Well, I'll buy another one. <laughs> you know, that's not the way to do it. Okay. So all of a sudden, this nice, simple, cheap thing is not quite so simple anymore. All right. Quality comparable to, or exceeds film Im images, I would say anything above 12 megapixels exceeds film, anything 8 to 12 is comparable, anything less than that is less than. So, there's a 2 megapixel, you can make a 4 by 6 print, these are the resolutions in your